Hey uh, folks, how you doing? Sorry for the slightly late start there. Um, I've been fucking around with a few things just to see if we can get dealing with that lagging. I'm trying to rule out a couple of things. What I'm really enjoying right now is the fact that my Windows machine is determined that it is 9 o'clock, even though I've set it to, uh, to uh, update the time automatically, and unless my other machine is incorrect... Nope, it's 8 o'clock by that thing as well. Okay, so it's just this machine that's being shit. Um, because I'm wondering if that could even be to do with the the lagging. Like, if if machines start lying about times, all kinds of networking stuff starts fucking up. Anyway, greetings! We're back! We're doing this! Good to see everyone. Uh, let's see who's hanging around at the start. And how quickly they will leave. Um, da -da 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 -da. Twitch is being... Turbo, just bringing up the user list. Hello, Jace, Electrical Skateboard, Infinicel, Ponder Pimp, Chimera, Sorted August, and Ooglestraxi. Lovely to have you all. Um, let's let's start playing around. Let's get these headphones out of the way. Because we won't be needing them today. I have been trying to mess around with sound again. See if we could do that episode. But that's not for today. Uh, the first thing we need to get rid of is all those ships. Um, of course, we're... Continuing from where we left off, we were going to be doing some uh, collision stuff. Uh, we'll get back to that real soon, but the last week has been crazy productive because I've had the whole thing off. Um, so I thought I'd like just show you a couple of things I've been working on because they're going in, uh, well, they're going out the end of next month. First thing, let me jump over to the right machine. Let's do this. First thing is that RTG Math now has full documentation. So I was on that kind of uh, documentation sprint. Um, so now if you go here and check out the documentation section, we have fairly complete API docs. Um, all the common stuff, Vector 2, 3, 4, Quaternions, projection matrices, all that is all documented. Um, Except in very few cases. The part of the API that isn't documented, look, and even with types as well. Thank you so much to Chimera for his ex excellent staple documentation system, which made all the generation of this very easy. Super hackable. Um, the bit that didn't work, or sorry, the bit that I haven't done yet, um, is the regions part of the API, which is very work in progress still. And I don't want to document it until uh, it's down here somewhere. Yeah, there we go, down into regions. Um, that's where we've got lines and rays and line segments and um, access line bounding boxes and things like this. That API is still under construction, and I'll get it done eventually. But it's again with with all these things, they're very they're tedious to work on. So you get a kind of rush of inspiration, like I'm going to do that today, and then you just crunch on it, and then you can't touch it again for a month or two because it sucks like writing docs. So I won't be doing this again for a while, but it is working. Also, other good things. Um, there's a function called vary describe. So in vary, there is vary describe. Um, and if you give it a symbol, um, it'll print out the documentation for that symbol, uh, the GPU related documentation for that symbol. So sign, uh, this is the Lisp name. These are the overloads in uh, vario or in vary um, for this function. And then we've got the official GLSL documentation which is super handy, um, obviously. So that works for everything in the GLSL spec, or it should do if there's anything missing. File an issue on uh, the GLSL spec, spec repo. Um, but also, if you go to the Vario repo and look at variodescribe.el, if you pop this stuff in your .emacs file, um, then you can hold down a control and do CVV on any symbol and you will get the description in a dedicated buffer. So we can go in and, again, things for like costs, CVV, and we get the documentation. Um, what's nice as well is even if you haven't written a doc string for something, um, it can still be useful. So this uh, vert game units to GL uh, function here, we can't see what the types are at the moment. If we do CVV, at the very least what we're going to be given um, is the name and the argument names and their types. That just ends up being super helpful. I mean, I can do a better job with all this formatting and some of the things in behind the scenes are a bit janky, but oh, it feels good to get that in. I, I've just had one of those weeks where, like, you know when you've been pushing for a while and you just feel like you get over a hump? I'm, I'm there right now. Um, 
And so I've, I was playing with a few things, in, like I was doing the documentation, I was playing with sign distance functions. Um, when I was doing the sign distance functions, um, it, it became very, it was very quick that I started wanting to be able to graph the values. And so you end up, f for when you're doing uh, these SDFs, um, shapes are described by the distance from a point to um, the edge or to the um, to the shape. So if something's negative, it's inside the shape, and if it's positive, it's outside it. So you have uh, three values. You have your two dimensions, and then you have a distance value. And you can plot that in color, but negative values are then always clamped to black, which isn't very informative. Uh, it doesn't help you see the shapes of the functions, and that's really what I wanted to see. You could plot it in color. It's like, say, sorry, if you plot it in color and then shift the ranges, so negative is, like, you push the negative values into the positive area. You can see some of them, but the eye is very bad at distinguishing where certain points are along a gradient, so that sucked. So what we did instead was add a, a 3D graphing system, um, and it just uses particles because it was a really flexible, easy way of doing it. So I'm going to show that if you look at me. Just indulge me while I go off on a rant about this stuff because it's cool. So let's uh, bring up bring up the uh, code that we're currently running over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to define um, a p-graph. And we have to give a name, so let's save. Um, boop. And its kind is going to be a range. There's a few different kinds of graph, but we're just going to use the range one for now. Um, we have to give a name for the um, variable that's going to be passed in. So basically, this is going to be a function from a float that's on a range um, to a, a position in 3D space. And what's going to happen is whatever position we compute, that's going to be the position of a single particle. Um, we'll see in a minute how that works out. Let's just find a place. Okay, here. So let's for now just return b000. Um, I think it's a vector 3. Let's compile it. That all compiled. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to stop the simulation, but we're just going to say clear. So it's running in the background, but we're just clearing the result after we've drawn. Um, we're going to call boot. And boop is a function that is going to take a position and a direction vector 3. You can see down the mini buffer down here. Those are your camera and um, camera position and camera direction. So most projects have their own camera system because cameras tend to be specific to things or you have your own way of doing it. And I don't want to force that on anyone else. And I don't want to put input stuff into Nineveh, which is where this code lives. I want the particle system to be completely standalone and kind of ambiguous as far as this stuff is concerned. So we're going to put, place our camera statically. Let's just say we're at 20 and um, yeah, let's, let's put ourselves 50 back. So we're looking in the um, negative one direction. So that's 50 and wait a second, which way is this? So we want to be at 0x, 20 high and 50 back. Yeah, there we go. Okay. The direction vector 3 is going to be 0, 0, minus 1. In fact, let's just face down very slightly. Um, not point not 0.01 maybe. Not 2. Who cares? We'll, we'll find out soon. Um, and you can see down the mini buffer, there's a bunch of other arguments as well. We can pass in a, a point color, a point size, um, the min and max of our range, and how much we're stepping by. So at the moment, we're going to go from 0 to 100, stepping by 1. So we're going to get 100 particles. Um, Let's do this, and we can see one, and that's because all of them are being placed at the same space. So let's uh, let's go and put them at i. Now we have a load of particles, but they're coming towards us. Let's put them away from us. So that's cool. Um, let's do something a bit more interesting with them. So let's uh, define let and offset. And now we're going to produce a different position. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate it. Remember that all of our um, functions from RTG Math, although at least the, the vast majority outside of regions, are available on the GPU as well. So we can do a vector 3 rotate of our offset. And let's do that by, I don't know, let's, let's rotate it by i. Oops, didn't like that. Of course, a vector 3 rotate takes a vector 3 uh, to specify each of the axes. So um, let's do this. 0i0, zero, zero. so we're going to rotate um, around the y-axis by i-radians. So we do this, and suddenly we get a little, little pattern. 
which is kind of cool, but they're a little far apart from each other. Let's shrink this down. Let's do... Um, dist is... Whoops. Times i uh, 0.1. And we'll do... Actually, we'll just do dist and we'll make this negative. No, no, actually, we're going to do negative dist. And it freaks out because I'm using let and not let star recompile and everything got a lot smaller. That's cool. Now we've got some more space. We can fill it up with more stuff. So let's go down and look. So min was zero and that was fine. Let's do max is a thousand. Right? So now we have a thousand particles. And that's it's going to start getting more interesting as we kind of yeah crank this number up. And of course, by specifying a minimum, uh, we can also cut out certain ranges but let's do this. So already we're able to see that we're we're able to fuck around with this stuff really simply. Um, seems we've already got this up. Let's let's mess around with it a bit. I'm gonna say that the rotation that we're going for is slightly less. Let's times it by 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Yeah, that's nice. Um, let's uh, displace them. And remember, we've got this library of functions. We can just do things like, let's say the height. Actually, we'll, we'll get back to the library in a minute. But we can do, say it's just the sign of i. Um, and then our position. Let's move these two around. Our y position can be height. Ah, that's not very much there. So let's times this by something more. 10. Um, we're starting to get something there. Uh, let's modulate this a bit more and see what we can see what we can see and let's move up a bit and back a bit. Maybe that's a bit high. There we go. Starting to see a nice wave in the middle here. And of course, um, we like being able to have uniforms in our shaders. And this is just a shader at the end of the day. We're just writing GPU code. So anything after this arg name, which has a predefined type of float, is just a uniform. So we can say now is a float. And then over here, let's pass in the current time with the now function. And then we could animate this. So we can do i plus now. And uh, that's very slow. So let's play with now a bit. Now is now times a thousand or a hundred. Maybe let's see what we get with a hundred. There we go. Okay, so suddenly we're getting some animation. So basically, we've got toys, which is awesome. Um, this isn't the only uh, kind of graph. So there's range and there's range color. When you do range color, you're expected to return two values. Um, and the second one's going to be used as a color, so we can just do 0, 0, 0, vec4, and then they're all red. Or you could um, color them based on something else. Like our height function needn't be this. We could just say Perlin noise. So again, this is why like, it's really nice when we start building up this big old standard library. Let's just look at what overloads there are using our documentation. Woo! So we know that we can pass in a vec2 and we'll get um, a value back. I'd like to add um, return types when known to that as well. Um, let's have a look. Da, da, da. I is now, so let's do... Well, we calculate our offset, which is based on this. So let's do... this and then we're going to take the x and z components of position and feed them into our Perlin noise and it's going to freak out height is undefined who's using height before it was, a, it was around oh yeah this we'll just say zero for now um, what should we do da, 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 da. so we're throwing it into the Perlin noise and now we're going to go and define pos to be 
uh, the X that it already has, and the Z that it already has, and the height from our preliminaries. This is a really ugly way of writing this, but, you know, it doesn't matter. Those octaves are probably too high, so let's... See, it's a bit actually hard to tell without... Um, when there's only 3,000 things there. Let's, uh... Let's do that. And again, you can throw a couple hundred thousand at this and it's just not going to be a problem. It's a quad with instancing. It's like with our um, our uh, actors. Like, you can get away with a lot. Um, we'll find some octave in here that starts feeling kind of nice. There we go. So, now I'm just getting distracted and playing with toys, but um, I hope we get the idea that we can, you know, we have some fun stuff here that we can be doing things with. And all of this will be available next month in, um, in Quicklisp. Yeah, basically go crazy. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Um, I think that was the main thing I was going to show. Oh, the other thing that's really fun, of course, is, and this is something I wanted for ages, was that... Um, We don't stop anything. Like, our uh, our system is still running down here. Um, just because we want to do an experiment doesn't mean we should be stopping developing what we're already doing. Um, as long as we can find a place to do the draw call, everything's fine. Um, fuck, fuck it, I'm just going to leave that there. That's uh, actually kind of pleasing to me. Um, I'm going to slow it down somewhat. But yeah. Particles. So that's what some of the stuff I was working on over the last week. Let's, uh. Oh, I'm in fiddling mode again. Stop it, Chris. No. <laughs> oh, just a little more fiddling. Who knows? Nah, it was alright there. Okay, so what we're meant to be doing today is uh, playing with Collision. So where we got to last time was um, we were rendering all the actors. We render all the actors to the screen, but we also render each um, kind of actor into its own texture. Uh, so then we could do uh, lookups to see if any of them are touching each other. So let's go and use another function from um, Nineveh, which was draw text. And I'm going to rearrange some windows here. So let's bring this back. Uh, let's go and look at our actors um, hash table. And so these are the different kinds of actors we've got. Um, so let's look at bullets. And now each of them has a, um, they have a texture um, where the collision stuff is rendered into. And we also have this coal sampler, which we're just using for debugging. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to render that. So let's do get hash uh, in actors. We're going to get the bullets. And then we're going to do actors call sampler. That was the thing we were looking at. And it's freaking out because it's saying it was cooled with nil. Uh, that actually makes sense because it's bullet and not bullets. There we go. So if we take this and drop it in draw text and compile, um, we see this big black space. But if I start shooting, we see all the bullets. And the texture is the size of our world, which is currently hard coded to something like 4K by 4K. Um, we need to add a macro for defining the world, or maybe put those values on the on the, our uh, god actor. I'm not sure yet. Um, let's put this down into the bottom left, or on the bottom. Yeah, we'll leave it in the bottom left for a minute here. So okay, so if I move around, uh, you can see that those are the bullets, and even when they're off the screen, part of the screen, we can see they're still traveling in that mask. And we can go and change bullet to alien. 
Um, and you can see the alien, or we can do... So is it ship? And there's us. So if we fly off the screen now, there we are. Still in the world. But we, even though we're shooting, we can't see our bullets, because again, per actor mask. And what I wanted to do... Um, oh, is the stream lagging again? Boo! That sucks. It's looking okay here. We're, we're still uploading at 3-4, but you said that a good few minutes ago and I wasn't paying attention. So I was indulging myself, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I really hope this isn't going to start being shitty. Um, I'm going to have to start like monitoring the connection just around the clock, and that's sucky. Okay, so we're writing things into these different textures. And now we want to start detecting collisions between different um, actor kinds. And the way I wanted to do that was just to um, have an SSBO where we... How do I... See, I'm trying to remember how we're going to do it now. So let's say we move this guy to here. And then when he renders, I also I want to look up um into the like let's let's say it was the alien um mask and we want to see if any of the pixels that we're at um are covered are, are like contain any color and it because that will mean that there is an alien in that position and we know that there is a collision between us and them and this is a this is a very broad kind of phase just like have i touched something that is of this type um, and so what I wanted to do was to write um, into an SSBO whether I've collided with something or not. So how are we going to do that? So let's uh, let's go to our rendering. And I think I saw Cerna subscribe. Nice to have you. Thanks for the sub. Um, basically, oh, by the way, uh, if there's anyone new here who this is just gibberish too, and want to get a rough idea of what's going on, I'm happy to explain any of that stuff. Just shout out in the chat. Um, we can go over anything. We've got loads of time. I'm, I'm not in a hurry or a deadline to finish anything. Let's look at render. So, here's our fragment shader. So basically, any place where um, this has a value. Now, hmm. I guess we've got a, um, we've got an alpha mask. So I guess anywhere that the W component is greater than zero. Let's actually check that because I can't remember. I never remember if it's, um, zero or one. That's the, uh. is opaque. Oop. There we go. Okay. So one is solid, zero is not. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool. So anywhere that it's greater than zero, our character exists, and we want to look up and see if there's anything in the other mask. So, um, Hmm, it's kind of tricky actually because th there's multiple masks that we might want to look up into. How do we know what we're going to be colliding with? Let's look at... Excuse me. Uh, test code. So this is the code that defines this. And our ship... All of our ships are going to be running the same actor code. So they're going to want to know the same things about what's colliding with what. Um, or what they're colliding with, rather. Um, so I think we can end up having... Let's just make a little stub function here. Um, if, um, call with... Um, and it's going to take a actor kind, and it's going to do nothing. But let's say we're down here, and we want to know if we collide with ships. So 
when call with uh, no aliens. Sorry, with a ship. Then we're gonna go print blurg. Oh, blur. That'll do. Um, so this is gonna tell us that. So while we're updating this kind of actor, if we come across this, um, then our system somehow is going to register that it wants to do collisions between ships and aliens. Um, and then that we should do a pass for that later. I think what we'll do is we'll do a separate collision pass for each, um, for each pair of collisions that, that have been registered. I wonder how that will work. I don't know. Let's go and look where we can store this information. Actors. Da, 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 da. So there is a... Actors kind. So this is this is the thing that holds the array of all the actors. Um, so maybe when we're updating this, we could register in here what we want to collide with. Um, so we could have a check collisions with um, and I mean we're going to be running over a lot of these so we I'm prematurely optimizing my head I was thinking like what I, could, what I can do is I can put a hash table in here um, get hash? Oh, make hash table. And now all of the um, all of our different kinds of actor have a hash table associated with them where we can push the names of the types um, that we want to check collisions with. And the reason we're just using a hash table is for deduplication. Um, we could do this in a lot better way. Um, like, again, we could just each actor type could have an ID, and then we could just put a bool in a, an array or something like this, but let's not think too much about that right now, because that's just like work and stuff. So accessor is going to be um, so we can do check collisions with or collision requests or whatever. Yeah, let's do actors. So actors uh, check. This is too long a name for given the fucking uh, resolution of this screen right now. Um, call with. Actors call with. Um, let's do that. Oh yeah, one change I did make since our last stream is that um, this used to be a struct and I've changed it back to a class because we were getting no real advantages other than maybe a tiny bit of performance but it was stopping us from doing live recompilation. Which sucks. We're not at the point where we have to care about any of that stuff, so let's not. Um, we can turn all these into structs if we want to, once the API is locked down. Um, it's okay. If we go and inspect actors, um, then each of these now has a call with hash table. And then we should go into the update actor code and we go through all of the actors and what we should do then is we should get the actors uh, call with for um, actors and clear that hash table because it may be um, all of the um, ship actors are actually in a different state maybe they only check for collisions when they're in main and in another state, they're not checking at all. So we don't need to do checks then. Um, and maybe some of them remain and some of them aren't. So this suddenly becomes handy. So we're going to clear hash. We'll do that. So now we're clearing all those hash tables at the beginning of every frame. Um, then when we go through, we're going to update actor. And now we're going to want to um, push those values into this hash table. And so we've got to work out just how we're going to expose that. Um, and we'll look at that in a second. AK Karam, hello! <laughs> Love like Semtex saying, backers make demos. I know you said that ages ago, but it was making me chuckle. Long way from that, dude. Um, 
Oh, lagging. I just saw it. You little bastard. How's it been for you guys? Because I just saw a really sharp dip there, and that was... How, how, how would be the best way of determining whether this is Twitch or whether this is my internet connection? Um, I know Twitch is unlikely to be having any major problems, but I don't know how they throttle paid versus unpaid and at certain times of day and all that kind of crap. How would I rule out them? If it's your internet, OBS should report it. Oh, as in like, uh, yeah, my it's like OBS has the little um, kilobytes per second upload. Um, yeah, the the okay, so the color square is about dropped frames. Yeah, then that's dipping like really hard down again into the red every now and again. Not at the moment; it's been better so far. But at the end of the last stream, it just tanked to like a hundred, and that was it. Um, but again, like, does that mean? I mean, that means that Twitch isn't receiving them, right? Like, it's not able to act the, like, it's received them. But that doesn't separate whether it's me or them. Love, like, Semtex is saying, there is, uh, there is network problems in Oslo last couple of days. Package loss. Interesting. That is good to know. Oh, I hope they get it sorted out, because I like doing these streams, and I don't want it that to be a regular problem. Um, okay, so we're going to have call with, and it's going to be... This is a horrible name. We'll change that later. Let's go and look at our API section actors. And let's drop this in here somewhere. Um, and we can get self. Let's just do break and look at self. Oops. We get a ship. It'd be kind of handy, actually, if all of the elements, if all of the actors had a reference back to the container that holds them all. Um, that would just make walking there much easier. Uh, yeah, I think I might add that. All right, let's get rid of this and say continue. And let's look at, I guess it's spawn that has this logic. Oh, well, the first thing we need to do is add it to the actor type. Uh, kind, whatever. Uh, it's not the best name, but and we'll do init form. And I'm going to just do this a little strangely for a second because I would like. Oh, can I do that? Nah, probably not. Um... Yeah, init form is going to be undefined. I guess that's it. Um... And then we want to populate that for all of the current actors. So let's just hack that in by going to update actor. Oh, I know you're here. You're right here. There we go. For all the actors with, um, no, set f the slot value of the actor. Um, and the slot actor is the slot name is going to be called kind. And we're going to set it to. Um, Actors, which is the container. Groovy. So now all of them have been set. We can get rid of this code. Um, and if we just go and look at actors, all of these guys, like Jed, now has a kind object which is pointing, sorry, a kind slot which holds the uh, kind container. Right. Um, but this needs to be set on creation. So, what we can do is, there's make instance. We make instance of the name, though. 
So when we get an actor, we should set off the slot value. Um, oh no, here we go. Set the kind to be. We don't have kind in here, do we? No, just kind name. Perfect. Set f the kind um, to be the get hash of actor kind name of that actors table. Boom. Okay, so now they're going to get populated on start. So let's for start forgetting things and breaking stuff. Let's. Um, Let's add that. So we want the kind. Don't need these yet. I guess that's it. Um, So then, when we update the actors, actors, where are you? Oh no, we actually wanted to go to here, didn't we? API actor. When someone calls call with, we can get ourself, we can get the with slot kind of ourselves. And then we can with slots, and we can set f the what is it? Get hash actor kind no. Yes, actor kind uh, in our kind hash table. Was it called kind? No. Ah, kind was the. Object, yeah. Let's bring up the inspector. My brains, as usual, in a mess. So, the kind slot holds, let's say, this object. And then we want the call with slot from there. And then we want to get the actor kind from call with. And for now, we're just going to set that to true. Okay. So what should happen is that after we update our actors, if we just put a breakpoint, let's just do break through. And we're going to get all of the... It was the ships, I think, were doing this so far. Let's have a look. It was test... Test alien. Yeah, our ship is calling call with. Um, alien actors. Okay, here we are. And our call with hash table is empty. Boo! Why? Should be something in there. Or did I do that at the wrong time? No, we, we did this after... after this. Like, so we update all the actors, that's when we would write into that hash table. And then we looked at it, and there was nothing in there. That is strange. Let's say continue. Decabytes. Ooh, I've never been here when you're live. Hello! Good to have you. It's really cool. Um, oh, wow. There's some information in the chat. People with knowledge. This is why I like this. Right. Um... You're right, Shane. It is far more likely to be the ISP, and especially with the stuff that uh, Love Like Semtex is saying. It's part of the peering, though. It's hit almost all ISPs. Um, digital attack map has something going on around there. That's really cool. 
I need to check that out. <laughs> Shimera, our motivational speaker, is saying, Now you too can be completely useless in chat. Hurrah! We can all be useless together. I can be useless on stream. Um, oh, and you're at work, so you can't watch anyway. Damn! One of you are counting. Pomp of him. Yeah, totally. Right. Oh, if I can get my head straight, where we can find out what's going on. So. Let's bring the rep up a second. I want to do... Oh, oh, whoa, why is it saying blurp? Um, oh yeah, because this is now returning a value. Okay, well that definitely says that, uh... That definitely says that this is running. Um... And if we put a print statement here and say call with, we can see that there is a hash table. I think we're clearing that hash table too often. That would make more sense than this, I think. Because we should be getting something for this. No man, the clear hash is out here. What is going on? That's really strange. Whoops. This is not going to be happy. Um, hash table is zero. Oh, I hope one of you can see what I'm doing wrong. Because this is... Uh, this is stupid. Oh, wait. Wait a second. We are doing this for every kind of actor. Which is wrong. Um, we only want to do this for... Okay, okay. Right, we're nearly there. Um, let's change this to slot value call with. I say continue. Okay, now we'll just say continue. Continue, continue, continue. None of them are populated. That's not what. I... Oh. Okay, I'm just confused. Well, there we go. That one's populated. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. Every cycle, one of them's populated. That's a good. <laughs> That's a better sign than we had before, and it is alien. Okay, so I think the right hash table is being populated. Um. Let's hope so. Um, we can actually... Kinda make sure. Okay, this one... Holds... Is contained by this actors... Group, which is holding the ships. So that's fine. Okay, so that is the right one. False alarm. Everything's probably fine. And say continue. Cool. So our stuff's running along again. Um, what now? Okay, so we're writing into that hash map the collisions we want to check. So now then, after rendering, we want to do the collision check itself. So I guess we go in here and let's um, let's just deal our instancing um, code. Yes, we can just take this. We've got right collision map. Oh, that's uh, what's drawing in here at the moment. Um, Check collisions um, with. Okay, so we're going to pass in a, a mask that we're going to check, and we're going to pass in obviously the set of actors that need the collisions checked, um, and then hopefully we'll get somewhere. We don't. Do we actually need a fragment shader? Yes, we do because we want to know which fragments. Um, 
we are going to check against. <laughs> ah, my, my head's going a bit weird there. Um, I, 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 I'm, I think I'm okay. What we can also do, though, is... Um, let's rename this. So this is uh, Col VS. I'll just do Col Mask VS. Uh, because we're going to have a few kinds of collision eventually. Col Mask VS. It's such a coherent stream. Um, I just realized that this guy still is passing in an SSBO. And something was expecting it to, which is fun. Um, map G. Symbol collision is identified. Oh, it's in the shader. Whoops. Uh, yeah, I just removed something, didn't I? Idiot. This is what this shader, the regular rendering shader should look like. And then it's down here. Oh, this is going to be called FS, not BS. We can actually just leave this completely the same as our other ones, I think. It's going to be so similar. Well, let's keep it for now. We can swap it to the other one if there are... No changes in the end. Blech. Oh, one day all this stuff will make sense to me. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So right now, this pipeline is exactly the same as our rendering pipeline. So we want to make some changes. The first thing we can do um, is... Hmm. The first thing we can do is get rid of this arg. We are going to need an SSBO soon, and we'll leave it there. Um, Coal mask. We're going to pass in this texture um, into our coal mask, because that's where we're going to look up to see if we collided with anything. Um, Compile that, all is fine. Um, also, we don't need to return anything from this. So let's discard all the fragments. Um, and that means that we should have like, we can turn off blending for this as well. We can just basically turn off loads of stuff to make sure that it's not gonna do any unnecessary work. But we're gonna discard all the fragments. Um, then we are going to not worry about this collision stuff for now because we're not there. So we've got our color, and then we want to um, check in the other texture the same position um, as us to see if there's, yeah, if we've collided. Blah. Let's see. Um, how do we know where in the collision mask we are? Because this. Because our information here is UV scale and stuff like this. This is to do with looking up our texture from our little visual. Um, so in our directory, we've got a PNG, like the shuttle. We've got this guy. These coordinates are for this. So that doesn't tell us anything about where we are in the world. Um, so we could pass along our world coordinates and then we could look inside here. We would need to know the world size. So if we had our position and the world um, size, then we could do that. So what we actually really need are collision UVs. So collision UV is going to be a VEC2. Uh, we're going to pass from here. So let's just make a VEC2 for a second. VEC2. Um, Colby these zero. Colby B. Hopefully, when we do this, we've got a let without a body. We do. Whoa. Ooh. 
A bug. Interesting. Okay, I need to I need to record this because it's a weirdy one. Um, Frag shader with only um, discard breaks. Doot, doot, doot. And I know what a frag shader with only discard looks like. I don't need to record that. That's wrong. Fine. Label bug me. That won't be a hard fix, but. We will need doing. Um, okay, so let's just wrap that around there and recompile, and we'll be fine. Yep, 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 yep. That's all of our errors dealt with. So this um, takes a vec2. Then we're going to recompile this, and it was fine with that. That's interesting. Fair enough. Um, this now takes four vectors. So that's good. Okay. Oh, this isn't even running yet, so that's why nothing's breaking. We're not using it. Um, I'm going to move this boundary over very slightly. All right, what are we doing? Come on, brain. Up here we want to calculate cold UV, and then down here we're going to um, do collision equals texture. We're going to look up in the collision mask um, at the coal UV coordinates, and that is going to give us some information. Um, we only want to care about this if our um, color is greater than zero. And this is going to bring up an interesting question because we can do when um, greater the W of R color. Um, yeah, when it's greater than zero, do this thing. But now we've got texture reads which are going to be different per um, fragment. And I don't know if we start running into, um, what's it called? Ah, there's a, there's a term from GL that I'm forgetting here, and I was talking about it last week with a relation to compute. Conditionals in shaders can run into... Ah, oh, damn it. It's gone right out of my head. Anyway, there are certain limitations uh, that, you, that you have to stick with uh, between iterations of your, fra your different shaders, like fragment or compute and things like this. Otherwise, you get into basically undefined territory. Um, so we'll have to see how this goes. So yeah, now we need to compute this col UV. I think to do that, we're going to need to know um, the world. Uh, let's just do world size. Enter back two. And now when we do this, so update actors. What we'd like to do is we're going to draw them, and that's all fine. Um, and then we'd like to um, run collisions, Collis collision checks, or whatever. And we're going to just going to pass in the entire actor set to that. Wait a second, that's a bad idea because we are inside. Oh no. Yeah, for each of the different kinds of actor, we're in that loop. These are the per actor loops, and we're outside of those. So that's okay. So run collision checks is going to be a function. Let's move somewhere where we can place it. I guess down here. By the way, I'm thinking of taking a couple of weeks just to start doing some effect streams again, because this engine stuff is going to take ages. Um, I've tried to just keep doing it on stream, so there's not just me turning up and saying, hey, look, I've done a load of work. Go me. Um, but at the same time, this is taking a very long time, and I'm, again, to be honest, this is probably just my paranoia that, like, 
you guys are hanging out and I'm doing a stream that's basically me mumbling to myself and going, I don't know what I'm doing. Because I don't know what I'm doing. But I think I'd like to take a week or two hiatus just to try out a few basic effects because I've been on on um, a lot of the kind of... I've been following a few um, indie devs and stuff like this on Twitter and occasionally they just put out like GIFs of an effect and it's so nice. It's just pretty and I'd like to have a go at those. Um, it's also a good excuse to be adding more features to Nineveh as well. Okay, so we're going to run the collision checks and to do that we're going to do map G. Um, we're going to do the check collisions with... We're going to call nil for now. Uh, because I just want something to happen. Um, that's just going to touch the GPU shader and upload any uniforms or whatever. So let's just go print high. Cool, we're getting loads of highs. We're in that function. Hurrah. Um, now what? Well, we want to turn off blending. We Because we're not going to have... Um, how do you turn off blending, actually? Um, blend? Perhaps? I guess we set with blending. Can you do with blending nil though? It didn't complain. That's interesting. Let's go have a look at the source. Um, it's going to go and use with blending. Um, explicit blend params. Oh, okay, so if there's... Okay. Never mind. That doesn't do anything. I'll have to look into how you turn off blending in general in GL. Because that should be something that with blending supports. Even if you pass it like disabled or something like this. Um, okay. So now we need to pass in all the uniforms. Let's. It's pretty much the same as our drawing one. So we can just start with this. And straight away I'm seeing things that we don't need anymore. Look, tile counts. We're not doing animations. But we are going to have to care about animations because this is about, like, the moment it's currently pixel perfect collisions. And so we want the current animation frame that we're colliding with. So we are going to keep that. Fine. Um, res is undefined. Oh, yeah, of course. Fall of a took. Hmm. Let's just take this whole function. What are we missing? Loads of arguments. Okay, draw instance actors. Let's just pass in all of the things. If in doubt, copy paste. Instead of actor, we're going to pass in actors. Oh no, we do need. Oh, okay. Passing actor and actors then. What doesn't it like? Undefined variable actor. Oh, okay, it just does this. Even though it's copy pasting, I'm doing it poorly. <laughs> All right, let's try that. Now we're in here. This is still complaining that actors is never used, and that's correct. Now we carry on, everything's fine. Well, it should be, because it's almost identical to the other code. So, um, what are we gonna do? We need to pass up the collision mask. So what's gonna happen is that we break and look at actors again. Foo, or goo. Let's 
move that over here. We're going to get coal width, which is a hash table. And we're going to loop over its contents. Loop for um, key, or like um, kind being the hash values of um, of coal width, I guess, yeah. Slot value, actors, call width, but it's so long. Ugh, what am I gonna do with this? It's still nasty. Ah, oh, let's just do that. That's that's horrible. Anyway, um This is the hash table we're interested in. We're gonna loop over each of the keys in it, which are going to be the kind of um, actor we want to collide against. Uh, that's going to be that's going to tell us which collision mask we need to look at, which is which call sampler. Okay, so then we can do um, let's do do and let's. Um, Call sampler, or just yeah. Call mask is the actor's call sampler of um, kind name. Kind is get hash actors kind name. Okay, so. We grab the kind object, we go and get their sampler object out of there, that's the mask. We can then go down here and finally pass it in to whatever that argument was actually meant to be called. Continue. Oh yeah. Oh, it's unbound? Oh, that's going to be fun. Um, come on, Chris, where are we? We're lost! We're all doomed! Everything's doomed. Um... Render? Sure. Call mask. Right. Maybe. Continue. Okay. Um, how is that happening? So for kind name being the hash keys, not values. All the values are just T at the moment. Um, oh, it didn't crash. Nice. Okay. So what is happening is for... Let's bring up the raffle so we can actually see some effect happening. We're looking up in that hash table of who we want to collide with. We're getting... Um, we have their name which is the alien. Um, and we're going and getting the sampler for this texture. And we're passing that in to our pipeline here. So now we still need the world size, which is a vec2. Um, all of these things are just like completely hacked in. So if I look at actors, I think 2048? Yeah, like the uh, collision texture is this size. So right now that's our world size. And that will have to be configurable at some point. But not today. So that's getting passed in. Cool, now we're actually getting somewhere. So we have um, this. We have a world position, I assume, um, in here somewhere. I expect it's this one, VPOS. Wait, so that's the vertex position. Let's have a look. 
we've got vert, which is our vertex data. We've got data, which is our per actor data. So what's in per actor data, right? That has the pos, which is this. That's our position um, of our actor in the world, I think. Yes, that's gonna be what that is. So then we add this on somehow to like here. We add this on to our, we've got our vertex position and we add on the world position. So that's now the world position of this particular vertex. And we have the world size. So if we take the world position and divide it by the world size, that should be our world UV, I think. Um, but we're gonna need to turn this into a VEC2. So we'll just take the X and Y. Boom. Oh yeah, it's not V tilde, that's swizzle. There's no argument function um, that lets you define divide between a VEC4 and a VEC2. That is perfectly reasonable. So what we'll do is we'll just um, swizzle here. Oh, now. It's still working. Good. It's actually really annoying that we can't see our output. That's pretty gash. So let's let's render this for a minute. Yeah, we need to actually render something. Um, and currently what we're rendering is nothing because this when um, we can't return the value from here. It should have actually given us a more descriptive name. Let's check a fragment shader. No, this should have said that the res return type is or vec4 and void. Um, but it didn't for some reason. But I'm not going to worry about that. Either way, it's not good. So what we can do actually is we can take this and multiply it by our the alpha from our pixel. Then if it's zero, and we'll do um like so basically if it's greater than zero, it's going to be visible, and if not, it's not. Um, but I want to clamp this within a certain range. In fact, I want to step it up. So let's um, let's saturate this first. No, we'll saturate it afterwards. Saturate. So this is going to clamp it between zero and one. Um, it's already gone ten o'clock. No, it's not. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the Windows machine, which is wrong. Uh, right. What a Dave. Right. We're going to saturate. But what I want to do is I want to step. Um, and let's look at the GLSL documentation of a step. Is this it? I think so. It's a function that you should be able to give it a threshold, and when a value crosses that threshold, it goes the like normally the return of this function is zero until you cross that threshold, and then it's one. Um, edge, yeah, you've got an edge, and you've got an x. Um, for element i of the return value, zero is returned if it's less than edge, and one is returned otherwise. But yeah, it's perfect. Fine. Um, so our edge is going to be very small threshold. So let's just say 0 0.01. 0 .01. If we've got any value, um, and it's a vec4, so hmm. I'm actually going to put this in its own variable. One second. Threshold is 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0. 0. I never want the alpha component. So this is going to be zero. 
until we cross 0 0.1 in any of the um, any of the components, and then that component is going to be one. Whatever. Let's see what happens. Let's compile this. Freaks out. There's no applicable version for Vec4 and Float. You're correct. Oh wait. It's, oh yeah, this is Float, which means we only need. Oh god, damn it, Chris. Where was I getting that from? I don't know. Oh, I should have cleared those errors. Okay, that's compiling. <laughs> Fuck. We've got to render this somewhere because it is just annoying that we can't see anything right now. Um, but I'm not sure how we're going to do that. So we've got run collision tech checks. And what is it doing? We've got no blend. Oh, we've got whatever blending there already is. Actually, screw that. I'm going to go back to default blending. We don't need any fancy blending. Oh, what? Oh, maybe that's correct. If we... Yeah, that might be the result of the collision checks, which would make sense. Um, we've got an order problem, of course. Um, where is wrong collision checks done? It would really help to understand what I'm doing about now. Hmm... Yeah, that is that. But the problem is, <laughs> we want to see the results that actually uh, that are being obscured by these ships. Um, and currently, we don't worry about depth at all. We turn the depth test function off. So we could do is just comment this out for a minute. Right. Nasty, but it's there. Um, but now this result is probably behind the other one. Oh, God. Not thinking about this very well. Um, Well, to try. <laughs> oh, I need some coffee and to look at the chat. Folks, are quiet. It's not surprising. I'm I'm not been saying much that makes sense at the moment. It's just throwing things at the wall. What happens if I remove draw instant actor instance actors? Okay. Now, what I expected was. When the ships overlapped, we should see something here. Of course, I'm obstructing that right now by just returning red. Um, we don't need to saturate a step because it's only going to return one. Um, the threshold... Wait a second. No, this is, this is wrong. This is completely wrong. So we take something out of the collision mask, multiply it with um, the transparency of us, because we don't want to care about things where we're transparent. That's what needs to be um, stepped and thresholded. Then we're returning the wrong type. Now we're, now we're doing, this is where I was thinking about the VEC4. Okay, okay, we can do this. Um,
So there's a few possibilities. Maybe we're we're sampling in the wrong place. That would explain it at least. Um, let's just. do this. Now what I'd want to see is that when these guys move right, we should be able to see a bit of them here, because we should be... Wait a second, are we... Are we losing our tiny little minds? Quite probably. How do we do this when we write into the collision mask? Like, because we... Hmm. You know what? Maybe we can use the um, GL Fragpos because that'll be in window space. Ah, but we don't want it in window space, do, do we? We want it in world space. Well, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused now. I'm uh, more than a little bit confused. I'm pretty fucking confused. Okay, when we... Yep, let's... Uh... Let's stop for a minute and actually think rather than type. We do one pass where we draw into a really big texture. And that's the same as this, just with just drawing into the whole world. And then we've got another one where we're actually just drawing the screen for some reason. So that's the f one problem is that we're operating at the wrong scale to begin with. Like, our viewport size is going to be wrong, given what we're trying to do. So let's look at when we write into the draw collision mask. We have draw actors collision mask. We have the FBO bound, so we have um, the FBO for that actor bound, which means we're going to have... Our, our viewport is going to be 2048 by 2048. So that's the first thing we've got wrong. We can just hack that in a second. Uh, we can just do with viewport. Um, make viewport 2048, not like that, 2048, 2048. Oh, now it's gone. <laughs> oh, what does it mean? Um, yeah, because now it's actually drawing its position in the world, which may be way off screen. So even if we change this to red or something like this, so we're not going to see it. It's off somewhere else. Fair enough. Okay. Um, but we've set our viewport. To, yeah, that's that, that's probably miles away. Uh, <laughs> I think that makes sense. We could temporarily draw ourselves into the thing that... No, we can't sample from there and write into there at the same time. That's a stupid idea. This is proving rather annoying to debug. Actually, I'm going to turn that back to the red because whatever we do, we want to be able to see it. Um, oh, no. Ugh. All right, so we're rendering the 2048 by 2048. We're putting ourselves in there. Um, we're in the fragment shader for all of those pixels. But I mean, ostensibly all of those pixels. Um, we're running this guy, which right now just returns red. Fine. 
we're going to need to be able to see something to check the values. So I wanted to write the results into an SSBO. So I mean, one thing we could do is just set up that SSBO and see if we can write some numbers into it from this shader. Um, so let's, <laughs> I think we might need to do that. Because if I'm not going to be able to visualize like graphically what's happening to it, I'm going to need something else because I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, okay. Let's go back to our discard. Let us go and look at collision info, which is a struct which has 20,000 unsigned integers in it. I'm going to redefine this. I'm going to just go with integers for now. Uh, for reasons. Maybe reasons. Then we're going to go down here and decompile this. Um, and we're going to need to make one of those SSBOs. So let's do defvar SSBO um, make SSBO. We're going to say nil to data and the element type is going to be collision info. Cool. We've got um, and now let's go to actors and when we're doing the collision checks we're just going to pass in um, collision is that SSBO and we want to get at the first bit of data from that there's like 20,000 things in there so we don't want to see all of it um, let's just inspect this and see what kind of object it is. Okay, so it has data. So let's look for the SSBO data function. Cool, that returns a GPU array. Uh, we know that we can take a subsection of a GPU array. So let's just take this guy, take a subsection of it uh, from 0 to 10. Invalid subsect start or end for C array. Yes, that is correct actually, because this guy just has one element. I'm being dumb. Um, it's the array inside it that matters. So let's just say continue. Actually, then we should just be able to go pull G and. Um, oh, oh yeah. We got a whole bunch of data. Um, I just want to change this first one here um, to be 10. Let's just see if we can do that. So this should be being passed in. Um, so we should be able to do with slot. This is what we tried last time, and I know it didn't work then. So let's see how it goes now. Um, actors of collision should be the array that's with slots not with slot um, we can do a ref actors zero that should compile and then if we set f that to 10 um, then we pull it we see that it's zero everywhere. Not quite what we were going for. Um, it might be that that... Ooh, I wonder why that is. It's kind of bewildering, actually. What's, what's odd about this is I know that I've been able to have SSBOs working because I've got tests for this stuff. Um, ooh, but data layout. That's an interesting thought. What layout is this using? Let's. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go and look at Keppel's tests and just see how I've done this in the past. Um, because I we've got a couple of SSBO tests. Not many. In fact, we have one. Um, we've got something very similar to this actually. Standard layout for thirty. Ah, the struct has to have the layout. God damn it. That's why. Of course it does. That makes perfect sense. 
Um, how do we define that? Okay, we just put the brackets around there and we do this. Standard 430, cool, recompile that. Recompile this. Um, let's go and uh, free that SSPO because this is something else that's breaking now. <laughs> we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, and then we're going to set F SSBO to this and try and continue. And now things might be working. Let's pull G. Still zeros though. Per actor data is not a valid type. Oh boy, what have I done? A check collisions with Brace yourselves, what have I done here? Oh no, wait, did I change the wrong struct? Chris, you are a stupid motherfucker, that's for sure. God damn it, I bet someone in the chat has already caught it as well. Collision info. There we go. Everything's going so well. Recompile this. That for good measure. Why not? Uh, let's go to the rebel. Let's uh, free that SSBO again. Let's make a new one. With the latest collision info struct. Let's say continue. Uh, layout cannot be both. 140 and 430. Who is saying it is? Oh, I get that wonderful feeling that I've just fucked this up somehow. Uh, mixed stage fragments. No. <laughs> it's just 430? What are you doing? Oh, it does... Okay. Whatever we're doing, it's not working. Hey, Amfiano. It's a bit of a weird one today, mate. It's uh, basically me staring at SSBOs and wondering what I've done wrong. Let's go back and look at the uh, tests, because apparently back then I knew what I was doing. Uh, tests SSBR. Yeah, you can just specify. So that was another bug, actually. Um, let me file a new issue. Um, specifying. Oh no, that's. Um, This is a... Basically, what's happened is when I specify the qualifiers for the SSBO, um, it's ending up with two of them in there. So it's actually... It's actually two bugs. One in Keppel, because it's adding an unnecessary extra um, uh, layout qualifier. And then Vario's got a problem in that it's thinking that um, I'm adding uh, 430 and 410 at the same time. Um, bad error message when uh, specifying. Sunken Stein is now following. You're a strange beast, sir. <laughs> if, uh, if this episode is entertaining you, then I tip my hat to you. Okay, bad error message when specifying um, the same layout uh, qualifier or specifier, whatever. Qualifier twice uh, for SSBO. SDD um, 430, SDD 430. Uh, 
causes error. That is a bad bug report. <laughs> I'll assign it to me. Okay, so. Let's see how this is meant to work. You have a struct with a layout. You have an array, which is int and some length. We pass it as a uniform with its type and say it's an SSBO. We access it. And we could just make sure that with slots isn't somehow fucking up. Um, uh, collision info, actors, um, collision, and make sure we put in there something other than zero. And nothing happens. Boo! Okay, so that didn't work either. I mean, th I mean, there is the problem that we should be using like GPU fences and all that kind of stuff, but we're writing for every single run, we're writing the same value in. So um, I don't think discard has anything here. Like if we do vec4, zero, this doesn't really suddenly start working. No, so don't have to worry about that either. Um, I guess we could Pull the code for the uh, check collision with pipeline. Just make sure for my own sanity that this is doing the right thing. Um, we can see here that we have a, here we go. A standard 430 buffer, which is correct for SSBO. Um, because otherwise that would say uniform if it was a UBO. SSBO collision, 20,000 integers that and that, that slot is named actors um, and its instance name um, is collision and then down here we say collision dot actors one equals ten that should be doing something but it's not and it could be straight up that uh I've broken something like when we were jiggling around with all those different structs maybe I corrupted something and now that's not working because I messed around with SSBOs recently, and obviously I have tests for it that they do in general work. So what have I done? Um, I think I might restart the session and just see if I've somehow corrupted something. This is the problem. Because I've been making all these uh, different tools, I don't trust myself, and so I don't trust the tools. Um, So I am going to just restart this session. It's almost certainly not that. I mean, like that code has had far much, far more testing um, than the code I'm writing right now. So the mistakes are more likely to be here than they are to be somewhere else. But still, it's bugging me. I know I have to be unbugged. Ugh. The other thing is, well, I've written to SSBOs from Fragment Shaders recently as well, because I did a little color picker where I just stuck the result in an SSBO. Pretty sure I did that right. I definitely did that right. I, I know I did that right. We had the values. Um, let's see if something breaks. Yes, it's complaining. Boop isn't around, which is fine because... Uh, That was that graph, which we haven't defined yet. Oops, let's compile that and say continue. Oop, it's still undefined. Yeah, okay, just continue that way. Okay, so the engine is now started. Now we need to go and to our tests, compile everything here. Um, set the clear color again so I don't hate things. Uh, we're not seeing anything because in actors I've commented stuff out, like the rendering. 
Whoops. Oh no, that's the uh, debug texture. There it is. Draw instance actors. So the dude's there. Um, I'm going to put this... If I could stop doing that. Um, I'm going to draw that texture because I just find that handy. And as the aliens start appearing, we're not going to see them here uh, because we've turned off that rendering, but they are going to be rendering into this collision texture. So that's good. Um, then back in Daft. Oh dear. Um, we could turn this back on. That was our silly little terrain thing. At least we can see that worked. That little demonstration at the beginning of the video worked fine. It's everything else that hasn't. Um, Actors collision sampler. The alien. Oh, sure. We'll leave that going. Right, so to get back to the code we were trying to test, this is now set up correctly. But we're getting uh, redefinition warnings there. Redefinition, redefinition, redefinition. That's fine. Um, then we're going to make an SSBO. Which has no content. Oh yeah, one of our aliens spawned. There he is. Not visible here, is visible there. Uh, now we've made an SSBO. We pull it. And it's got some garbage and nothing else in it. And what we should be able to do actually is we go... Um, if we look at, what was it, SSBO data, we're not using it yet, so it's safe for us to be, whoa, that was not what I intended. Um, it's a GPU array, so we could say with GPU array as C array, whoops, uh, the thing was correct, with GPU array as C array, call it temp. And then we're going to get the AREF of temp zero. Right, that's not a regular vector, that's a C array. So we need to access it with AREF C, uh, which gives us, oh yeah, I keep forgetting this. Um, that's going to give us a collision info object. And we can get to collision info actors, which would give us that C array. Then we can do ARFC um, at index zero, and we get zero. And then we're going to just set this. Oops. To 10. Right, now if we do pull G again. Our first element is 10. Good. Fine. So now we're going to pass this SSBO to our collision checking disaster. Um, that was down here. So we pass that in. And it should be going and getting the actors array from the collision object inside that SSBO, getting the first element and setting that to 10. But the problem is, when I look at this, nothing's changed. Interestingly, nothing's changed this time. Um, now why is that? Because a pull G like that should actually do a full flush. So. Well, we've got 20 minutes left. It'd be really cool to actually at least work this out because we have not made much progress on the collisions. Um, how do you guys feel about if I hack on this 
other times during the week. Is, do you guys prefer if I do this on the stream? Or is this, um... Yeah. Like, basically, do you want to see all the all the sausage factory stuff of me sitting here getting confused? Or is it better if I work on some stuff in my free time and come back and go, wow, look at this. Because this is fine for me. I just, uh, I want to make sure you guys are having a good time as well. we got to find that balance. Because it's been 10 episodes now of this particular engine. I want to know what you think about that. Um, while I stare at this some more, I wonder why, why are you not doing something here? It's an SSBO. We should just be able to write to it. It's so similar to our other code. It's really got nothing to do with the fact that we're discarding, I don't think. Kick around saying, sure, this is fun. Um, uh, Mviano says, I want to see you participate in the jam, so free time is good. Um, dude, I'm going to be in the jam anyway. And that's not going to be streamed. That's just going to be me focusing on that. Um, and it I will be using this engine. A lot of progress is going to be ma made then. So that stuff won't be on the stream. Um, I've done a few tests to make sure that things are going to work. It'll be fine. Um, I'll do different collision if this stuff isn't done. Some can say I'm cool with either. And the upshot is... <laughs> <laughs> Shimera is saying the upshot of this is it makes me feel less bad about my god awful stream. Yeah, I mean, this is it. I mean, this is like, if you're trying to code things that you have no idea of how to do properly, this is what happens. Um, especially when you build a stack that you don't trust entirely. I was so happy about the stack, like, when I came on the stream. It's like, yeah, documentation, things are working, fucking cool, little particle graphs and shit. But now, now it's all terrible. And I don't know why. Why would this suddenly be wrong? What am I doing differently? The other code I can have a look at actually is my color picker code. Where was that? That's uh, sitting down in Fraggle on some weird branch. Um, color image color stuff. Pretty sure in here. Yeah, look, the picked SSBO. What's in that? Picked was just a struct with two things in it. Two vec fours. Maybe we could try that. Let's just try a really simple struct. Because, I mean, maybe there's an error with how I'm handling... There shouldn't be an error with how I'm handling int, since that other test worked. But we'll see. We'll see. Picked is then just set to some value. So what am I doing differently? Nothing. The answer is nothing. I'm not doing anything differently in this. And I'm doing it for a fragment shader. Let's just do this. Right. Yeah, we'll just call it picked. Why not? It's picked. There we go. Collision. Test is of type picked. It's an SSBO. Go to the REPL. Let's make another SSBO. Def var SSBO. Uh, make SSBO uh, with no data and the type is going to be picked. Bam, we've got an SSBO. No, we haven't. There's two reasons why we haven't got that. This is still collision info because I used def var, um, which is just as well because I wanted SSBO2 or whatever. Um, so there we go. SSBO2 is now picked. Fine. If we do pull G on that, we get just random shitty data. Uh, so let's do SSBO2. And let's go into our actors code again. And let's do collision. Now we're going to pass in test and it's going to be SSBO2. That succeeded. We're, we, no warnings. This code is running. This must be happening. So let's set a value in there. Let's just go set if um, picked. What's picked? Take an average. Picked average is of test is, wait a second, let's uh, go back to that type and see how it was defined. Right, call and average of both vec4s. So vec4 uh, with all ones and a vec4 with all twos, 
call recompiled go back here pull g on um, ssb02 and we get zero in both of them something is different something is different with this setup what have i got different It's so strange. I know this code works. Like, as in a day ago this was working. So, let's make an isolated test. Because I've got to work out when this starts failing. Under what conditions do my SSB always start fucking up. Because this is either a bug report or something I don't understand about GL in general. And both of those things are things that need to be fixed. So, let's... Um, Let's remove this. We're going to get a crash now. That's expected. Back in actors. So yes, we're taking a detour. We are now going to find out the cause of this fucking problem. Um, oh yeah, that didn't actually compile because... Yada yada yada. There we go. Compiled. Um, and we are going to... We will do a... Um, How are we going to do this? Doesn't matter. D on G. Uh, test vertex shader. Um, it's going to take a vert, which is a vec2. That's all. And all it's going to do is it's going to turn that into a vec4. So vert, 0, 1. Fine. That's the entire vertex shader. Test fragment shader is going to take nothing because nothing is passed over from the previous stage because the first argument always goes to GL position. Uniform is going to be um, test which is going to be a type picked and it's going to be an SSBO of whatever layout is defined on that struct. And right now all we're going to do is return um, some color. Some red. Cool. So we've got test VS, test FS, go def pipeline G um, test pipeline. We are going to say, uh, actually, no, we don't need, need to specify that stuff. We can just say uh, test vs, which takes a vec2, and uh, test fs, which takes nothing. The uniforms aren't included in the type signatures, that's just a thing. <sighs> okay, so now we've got a test pipeline. So we, what we should be able to do is, from over here, we should be able to say map g test pipeline uh, with nil, and it at least you know gets that far. Um, I'm unhappy about that capital letter. Then we're going to uh, use another function from Nineveh, which gets a quad stream vector two. So this just gives us a quad um, of vector two. Um, it's a stream of, uh, of what, however many, like six vector twos or whatever it is, to define the quad. Right. So with that, then we can do map g, whatever the result is from that. And for a second we saw it flash, right? That was, I'm not sure if that's showing up on the stream. That is the red coming back from here. So far, so good. Um, we're now going to pass in um, the uniform. And we're going to use our SSBO2. Um, and at the moment, nothing's going to happen. So what we're going to do, actually, we'll do put a prog in around here. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, Shimera, I'm not going to be able to come to um, ELS this year. Um, I was a little late in finding out uh, prices and things. It just doesn't fit in my budget to be able to do it this late. Not with starting the games company and everything. So. Not this time, I'm afraid. I would have loved to meet, meet up with uh, all of you guys again, but um, it is not to be. Right, so we're going to run the stage once, and then we are going to pull G SSB02. And right now we see that 000 on both. So now we can finally get back to writing into, let's just look in our history. We should have that in there. Um, yeah, doing this. Now when we do this, they're both populated. Look at it. How is that working? What is different here than what I was doing in the other one? What is different here than I'm doing the other one?
right? We pass this in to this guy. And we rode into it, like in the same way. I'm going to test this with our collision type. I want to see if we're... Um, I want to see if there's something specific to the shader, because I'm starting to think it is. Let's just not pass that up. Um, so basically, this isn't doing anything now. But we can be sure. It's not doing anything now. SSBO is not being modified. Um, go back to the REPL. SSBO. Little G. We can see. Okay. First element is 10. Second element zero. All the rest of it's garbage. Um, oh, did I just close the fucking REPL window? Oh, god damn, you're an idiot, Chris. And that's going to cause real fucking problems as well. Um, or it's very likely to. Oh, god damn it. This sucks. Um, is there a way to bring up the REPL? Um, uh... Oh, good. Cool. What I'm really worried about is if you run slime again and allow it to create a new REPL, it can create a new REPL thread. Um, and then you're on a different thread and you're going to try and do GL stuff. So let's just see if this crash is not. Okay, so we've got some values here. This is still working. Uh, let's make sure it's still. Let's change this to three and four. Pull this back. Three and four, boom, this is good. I'm gonna reach, change this order just to make myself happy. Um, four and three, brilliant, okay. So now we're gonna modify this. We're gonna take in um, our collision thing. Collision, where are you? There, SSBO, bam. It's not happy about that. We found some args we didn't recognize. Oh yeah, because we've got two Args with types we didn't recognize. Well, that's that's also correct. It hasn't recognized yet that uh, these are duplicates. But it caught me because I made two mistakes. I'm making multiple mistakes per change right now. This is going to go very well. Um, blah. Okay, so we've changed that. Map G. We're going to start pulling SSBO, the first one. And we're going to... Not like this. Not like this. Uh, blah, SSBO. Oh yeah, by the way, Shimera, I did follow your advice on setting, um, on changing this so it only started executing the expression if you hit return at the end or control return. I couldn't retrain myself out of my current practices um, with using like control J and I just had, I hit return so many times expecting it and I tried it for about a week. And then I had to change the settings back. So even though this is technically inferior, um, my muscle memory is just too worn in now. Um, so this is it. Garbage, 10, 0. Um, with slots, actors. This should be the array of blah. Then set f, the a ref. Of actor zero to thirty three, one to forty four, one to fifty five, freaking out because it thinks with slots temp two is read only. Ah, it's not tracking the fact that that is a Wait a second, why didn't this do that? I, okay, why didn't we get this error here? If this was true. Why are we getting this now here? Because, I mean, this is wrong for a start. Um, but I can understand that the compiler have made this mistake. It's a kind of a thing I could fuck up. But why not before? Not a problem. We'll just write this the longhand way for now, and we'll have to... Um,
possible AREF on um, slot of possible issue of all bug um, when setf AREF on slot of SSBO um, saying it's read only. This is enough for me to uh, check the streams. Oh no, let's, uh, let's just part, paste the code. Can't just be doing all these things without. Bug, maybe? Cool. Um, let's expand this. So we're going to go and change it to this. And what we're going to do is we'll just do collision info actors of um, blah 0, 1, 2 and we're setting them here right that compiled which again that's yeah that's a that's a compiler bug then it should have recognized that um, what happens now 33, 45, 55. That works. That fucking works. Okay. So let's try it again. Let's move it up here. And this is when it's going to work and I'm just going to start dabbing things because I will be so confused. Change blah to collision. Let's uh, pull G, check collision with, make sure. Oh, right, okay, that hasn't finished. Let's. Uh, why isn't that recompiled, actually? Why hasn't that recompiled? That's really odd. It, at the very least, it should have stored that information when it was run down here. I've got a horrible feeling about this right here. Print high. No, this is getting run, damn it. It's getting run. Yeah. One instance, but it's run. Oh, how does how does instancing play with uh We're doing actually doing this in a really stupid way. This is a really, really daft way, actually. We can do it much better. We'll get to that. Question, how does, with inst how, how does instancing affect writing into SSBOs? Does it? Who knows? Um, oh, I've just missed typing now. Yeah, so I'm not sure why we're not getting the code from that. That is another problem. Actually, we can just do this. Whew. Okay. We didn't find anything for that pipeline. That's super strange, because we're using that pipeline. Never mind. Let's try this. We're passing in SSBR. And here we're writing it to 13, 14, 15. Then we're going to our REPL. Then we're doing pull G on this SSBR. 33, 45, 55. Something is not right here. Um, I'm hoping that code change will have just nudged the compiler into, yes, doing this. Okay, 13, 14, 15. That's there. Um, Enfiano, very sorry for the uh, not telling you sooner. It was standard 4.30. Um, Code Legendary is just saying, I just got here and I'm very confused. Lisp, for real? Yes. It's, it's awesome. Isn't Lisp only used by academics? No, I'm just hairy. Uh, it's unrelated to any kind of academia. 
In fact, I'm a dropout. <laughs> so I, I, I can't do anything academic. It's a... There is an attachment to kind of academic stuff, um, but Common Lisp specifically is, yeah, like Shamara is saying, it's a lot more touched by industry than something like Scheme was. Scheme was used in academia um, a lot. Like, um, again, the, the SICP course and everything on that was built in Scheme. Scheme came out of a, a university research project and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, Lisp came out of that kind of area as well. But Common Lisp, when that was being standardized, by that time, the AI, the, the last AI boom was in full swing. And a load of industry people turned up to the standardization thing, basically saying, we don't want to change anything. <laughs> don't fucking change our lists. We're, we're shipping product. And then there was a kind of like 10 year period where they hammered out this spec. And the result is, as crafty as it is in certain places, because there's just places where because there were multiple different implementations of Lisp that were merged into a common Lisp. But there are some places where it's inconsistent, but it's also great because there's loads of places which are just have been tested in real situations with real developers before it was standardized. And uh, especially with the live coding stuff, you can feel it. It's just sometimes there's a decision which is like, why have they done that? And then you feel the reason for it. It's wicked. Um, Zonkenstein says, as someone in the industry, I say I. Oh, cool, man. Uh, Zonkenstein, you also said who you were earlier. It's someone lurking from uh, Lisp games. Da -da 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 -da. I'm guard on Freenode, usually lurking at Lisp. Cool, man. Um, Code Legendary was saying, wow, I had no idea. I've been very scared of Lisp. Um, it's... The, it's just a, it's a fun language, man. The only reason I write it in my free time is because it's so much fun. Um, there are some hurdles, like if you already like um, Emacs is currently the best editor for it. Vim, I believe, is okay as well, but it's going to be one of those two. Um, so getting into that can be a hurdle. That's how I got into like I got into Emacs just because I wanted to. I tried Vim and I couldn't get my fingers to remember things very well, and I tried Emacs and it came a bit faster, so I stuck with Emacs. That's the only reason I'm using it. Um, but it's great. The integration is better than any any other any language that I felt. The live coding's more integrated than anything I felt. It's good fun, man. It's just good fun. And we've built all this stuff. Um, the coding I'm doing, all this uh, GPU stuff, we're writing in Lisp. And that's being cross-compiled into GLSL. So normally you define a function um, like this. I'll just show you. Defun foo. Print hi, right? And then we'll do foo. These ones, defun g are defining functions that are going to run on the GPU. And so then we're composing them into shader pipelines. And so this code here is actually what's being compiled out of uh, this stuff over here. And so it's just, yeah, it's just cool. It's just cool. Right. Anyway, uh, keep asking questions. You're more than welcome to. I've got tons of time for that. I don't mind dedicating whole episodes to people's questions. Um, right now, I'm just trying to work out... Um, Defining the function in the shader. Well, what we what we do is um, the, the uh, library I've made, Keppel, wants you to um, treat the shader pipeline uh, like composed functions. I am over time. Holy shit, I am over time. Okay, that doesn't matter. We'll, we'll stop soon. Um, um, but yeah, like uh, running code on the GPU, you have like a you do have a pipeline with separate stages. So what if we define those stages as functions and then we compose them together into a pipeline like this? Um, also, we allow you to call GPU functions from other GPU functions, and we use that to import code into your shaders automatically. So rather than having to do things like an extra system that handles includes or splicing all those strings yourself, which is garbage, we uh, we do it for you. Also, this compiler allows you to have first-class functions, which aren't normally available on GLSL. So it's uh, it's cool shit, man. It's cool. Um, but I've run out of time, and we still don't know why this isn't working. But I tell you what we'll do. Last second test is we're going to turn off instancing here. And so it doesn't make a lot of sense what we're doing right now. But we should be getting something. Let's um, let's pull GSSBO. 
Nah, it's still not writing it properly. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, we're passing it in. Look, we're passing that guy in. So we pass it in. This runs, assumedly. Um, I hope it's running. It bloody should be. Instance cube stream. Yeah, we've we've got this. It's all here. We're not inside an FBO. We should be rendering straight to the screen, ostensibly. Something's missing. Something's missing, and I don't know what. What if I do? No, no, it's okay. Ah, ugh. ugh. There is one. There is one issue with this. It is ready to instancing. Is that if if count. We've got, uh, in the stream that we pass into our collision check stuff, um, we have per instance data, which is populating this stuff up, up here. Um, if this wasn't, like we should still get at least one though. We should get one call of this and one call of this. Um, I can't think of a decent way to just test that right now. Um, other than just, just say, I always return green or something. Um, and then we can run this in the REPL just like we've been running everything else. Fuck you! Let's try this. Um, actually, we'll just pass in nothing and see what happens. We've got to, like. There was a green flash. That goddamn run. So, let's pull the SSBO. Now it's 13, 14, 15. Okay, there is something going on here. It's almost as if... So when we run it out here, it's fine. But when we run it in there, something else is happening. That's so strange. Let's change this again to... 23, 24, 25. Um, pull. So it's still 13, 14, 15. Um, go back to the actors code here. Like, I'm so sure that this is running. Yeah, loads of high. Like, we're definitely getting here. We're definitely executing this. So something is going very odd. 13, 14, 15. We are not setting these values. And then I'm going to bet money, um, big money salvia, that if we run this right now and then pull, it's 23, 24, 25. Okay, so there's a problem there. We're going to have to dig in next week into what that is. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, there's a bunch of messages in here, so I'll just go through those quickly. And, um, yeah, then we'll call it a night. Thanks for hanging around for an extra 10 minutes as well. Um, Darius is heading off. See you, dude. Nice to have you here. Um, Pom de Pimp is saying, uh, shh, don't tell him that I've run over time. Yep. Uh... Code Legends is saying, wow, this is great. It is! It's so cool! Um, Shamara brings up a good point that people just, like, praise the shit out of Lisp. And, and, and like, in ways that I find really strange. It's got no syntax. Of course it's got fucking syntax. Look. Like, there is structure to this. There is syntax going on here. What a load of bollocks. It's its own AST. Well, not if it's m more than a trivial interpreter. It's not. I don't know. It's it's a really cool language. Some really nice practical features that make it just charming to use and very useful. But uh, there is some wank around it, man. 
Widdershins, 40 saying, just learning Common Lisp and loving it. Super fun to use, but then I do C++ in the day. So I would say that. Same here, man. <laughs> I do a bunch of like Java and C++ and Objective-C and oh, am I had to, glad to come home to this in the evening. Uh, but soon I'll be doing Unity stuff during the day, so I'll have different things to complain about. Um... Shimera is reminding folks that you can come see his streams, which are awesome because they've got birds in them. There's a bird cam, and you can look at birds while Shimera shouts a code. It's great. Uh, basically, come out and shit post with me. It's it's really fun. Um, Sonkenstein saying the whole concept of metaprogramming is scary for most beginning to immediate level coders. I know people have been coding Python for decades and are still scared as hell to try when I try and explain macros. The, the way I would say it, Zonkenstein, is uh, so many problems in life we attack with code. Like, it's just, and you name anything. You say, like, anything medical. You say anything to do with autom like automotive industry. And people start thinking, oh, yes, I could write some code for that. But when you're coding, suddenly, oh, no, you can't code code. That's just weird. Of course it is. Of course it's fine. It's exactly the same as everything else. Like, it requires some discipline. It requires some knowledge. But it's nothing special. In fact, it's nicer than most stuff that we write code for because it already has like definition and structure and all those things. It's wicked. That's how I would pitch it, to be honest. It's just like, we're, we're just coding. Just coding some code. Some problems are best solved with a computer. Um... Sorted August says, and usually the discussion sets around parentheses and not macros. Yeah, that's a... That's a dis I'd... If people are going to dismiss it for that, then that's that's a different problem. It's a people problem and not a technical problem. Speaking Beast saying, good stream. Thank you, sir. Nice to have you here. Um, great session as ever. Thank you very much. Uh, Shamira is asking when I'm going to write his thesis. I'm not going near anything academic for the rest of my life if I can help it. Um, <laughs> deadline is end of this month. Ugh, fuck that. Um, Unity is C-sharp, so you're still in Java hell. No, the, the, it's a different world, man. Like, C-sharp is... I, I'm, uh, it is the best of that style of language. C-sharp is Java done right, but it's still, like... There's still things. Um, actually, it's really... Oh, man, I could talk for ages. The, some of the new stuff that's happening in Unity is totally the right idea. The data-oriented design, um, generating compute shit, Cindy code compiling. Yes, 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 I've got plans in the same direction. Can't wait to try them. Um, it's awesome. Cody Legendary is saying uh, the new ML agents in Unity uses Python FYI. Interesting. Enjoying the stream. Wicked. Glad everyone enjoyed it. I'm going to bugger off. Some concise as F sharp, which is a great answer. Try that language. It's cool. Um, <laughs> C sharp doesn't have multiple inheritance, so it can suck my dick. That is, uh, <laughs> that is a perfect way to end this stream. Right. We're ending it. We're going. Goodbye. And I'm not, I've been clicking stop streaming. What am I doing? No! Fuck it. <laughs>